Hey there everybody, so today I'm going to do a little review of uh, this RC Powers F-18 I just got done building and this is for you guys out there who are thinking about building this plane yet don't know what kind of system that you want to put in it or how you want to set up your control surfaces I'm just going to show you how I kind of set mine up so to start out uh, powering it we have the Grayson Hobby Super Mega Jet V2 motor which is a fantastic motor especially for heavier planes like this one that weighs 33.2 ounces uh, I've used this one in the past aka on this uh, RC Powers F22 that you see needs a little bit of repair but basically this motor runs off of a four cell battery you can run it off three cell but it just doesn't do this motor justice but running off four cell battery will give this motor about 40 ounces of thrust and I've Doppler that plane level flight with this motor but eh, it's about 80 miles an hour upper 70s 80 so but underneath the hatch here we just lift this up it folds back pretty easy we have a uh, RC timer uh, it's a 60 amp speed control which is hooked up to an external BC since it has none and if you set your plane up with as many servos as I have I have eight servos this is definitely a good idea even if you have a BC running that many servos and then we got all these wires which connect to our receiver which let's get a good look at this if you can this is the spectrum orange receiver that you can get off a of hobby king and if you haven't really used these or heard about them uh, these are great little receivers they only cost I think eight dollars but they work great I think I have seven of them and the range is everything that you could ever want I have I think like six of these six channel and then uh, I have one of this small F-22, this 4 channel, and they're just, I think they're awesome for the price. And basically I check the range with it, I have one on that RC Powers F-117, and I've taken that jet as far as I can see with my eyes, with no binoculars or anything, and that receiver still just held up great. And there's a video of it actually on my page of it just straight up vertical flight until basically it was out of sight. and. I still had all control of it and if you think you need to go even further it's got a little hookup right here on the side where you can buy the satellite receiver that hooks up straight in the little side right there and give you a little more range but for park flyers this is definitely all you need for eight dollars and you can't beat it and then down here your battery just velcros into the bottom uh, this is a three cell battery it's just for demonstration purposes like I said I'm going to be using a 4 cell 2200 milliamp battery which should give about 5-6 minutes of flight time depending on if you're heavy handed on the throttle like I am it would be more like 5 minutes uh, so for the controls let me grab my DX6i right here trusty little controller and basically we just have the elevators wired together uh, just going straight up and down and then for rudders they are also wired together left and right and then we have our ailerons right here, just standard ailerons, but it is plugged into my flap channel right here. So when I hit this button, uh, they both pop up as spoilers for spoilerons. And I have that for when I'm trying high alpha with this plane. And then something new that I'm going to try out is wired into my gear channel right here when I hit this button is I have these slats on the front that will flop down and also help give it more lift as uh, wind kind of goes over this wing that way and basically for half uh, the stabilizer and get more lift so we'll, we'll see how that works out I've never done that before so we're gonna try and for the servos I have these two right here just uh, high-tech HS55 servos they are standard gear servos which for if you're a beginner pilot I really don't recommend these servos I mean, they're okay for rudders, but if you have them on control surfaces that are sticking out like these, especially if you fly the RC Powers F-22, which these stick way out, if you have a crash and these hit on the side, you're going to strip this serve out in no time. So, instead of using those, about the only thing I use them for is uh, the rudders, but I have gone to these, this is RC Timer, it's a Metal Gear servo. And this is a Hobby Parts Metal Gear Servo. They're both fairly cheap. I think this one's like $7 a piece. This one's probably a little bit cheaper. And they only weigh a few grams more, but they will hold up and they will last you the duration of your plane. Which, if you're me, lasts about a week. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the servos that I use. I'll flip this sucker over and show you the bottom side. So that is the bottom side right there. 
and basically to show you how things are set up these are like I said these are my slats run off the gear channel popping straight up and for you new guys out there these are run off of a Y and when you do that both of these servos as you see this one's pointing to the right you gotta set them both up in the same direction so if this one's pointing to the right with your little arm up right here then this one right here also has to be pointed to the right with the arm up so when you hit this button then they both will pull in the same direction so that's setting it up using a Y connector and that goes straight into the gear channel of your receiver now for your ailerons or spoilerons, basically you can put these servos any which way you would like because we're going to use a mix on your transmitter so no matter how you put it we can still get them to work but basically I just put one in the side here we go on the other side I put one in the side right here and then as you see you have your control rod which has a bend so it'll take this angle basically so you have a direct force going straight on your uh, control horns right there because if you keep it at an angle, eventually over time, it's going to wear out your uh, ailerons and it, the foam might start cracking or tear. And I only know that from experience because I've had it happen on a few planes. So you basically want it as direct connect as you can. And for our elevator servos, uh, this was the, I guess, trickiest servo to hook up is how to get my elevators working off of a Y connector where they both worked in the same direction and to solve this problem basically the one that's on the right side as you can see is just mounted in the side of this wall right here but with this control arm pointing straight down so when I pull down on my elevator it pushes my elevator giving me some up direction so remember that that's how the right one is the arms pointed down so when I go straight over here to the left side, which is on the opposite side, and we look, this one is pointed up instead of down. And we do that because if it was pointed down, then it would pull instead of push, and then your elevator would be going the wrong way, and you would be rolling instead of going up like you're supposed to. So that one's pointed up, so then it pushes, and basically it goes in the same direction as your other elevator right there. So that's how I set up my electronics on the bottom. And as you can see, the wires go straight through and into the side of the fuselage. And the wires just held down with some Velcro. That way they're just not hanging all in the way. It looks nicer. It gives you uh, cleaner airflow through there. <clears throat> and so, basically, that is how I did my plane. And now we'll go over to the DX6i right here. And I will show you how to do your mixes so you can get everything to work properly. All right. So first mix that we're going to do is if you want to do your ailerons. So on my plane, I have, this is my right wing right here. I have the right aileron going into the aileron channel of my receiver. And then for my left wing over here, I have it going into the flap channel or auxiliary port of the receiver. And then we're going to go into our mixes on our DX6 side. We're going to mix one. I'm going to hit this. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use aileron as your master, and then you're going to use flap as your slave. And then set these to active. And then for your positives right here, you can go positive or negative, and you're just going to have to play with this. One direction, if you try to turn it right or left, your both your uh, ailerons are going to go in the same direction. If that happens, then basically change this the opposite way, and just go the opposite way. But mine is on plus 100, so then when I go right and left they go in opposite directions and then oh an important thing set your trim to active so that way when you trim it out it trims out both of them because if you have it on inhibited then if you try to trim it then it's only going to trim the other on channel and then your flap channel or your other channel is not going to trim out so put that to active and then for less and now we're going to go on to how do you do your spoilers and if you want to do spoilers then basically what we're going to do we're going to go to your flap channel first and go down here to where it says land, click on it and then we're going to hit our flaps and then you're going to basically just take this number up oops, to where you want it and you'll see this flap go up see as I move it the flap moves and right now on yours on mine both of them moved up because I have it already programmed but on yours only one of them we're going to move up so you basically set on the desired height that you want it and that looks about right. We can change it when we're in the field. But we're going to keep it right there. So we got one of them up. Now, how are we going to get the other one up? 
Well, we're going to do this by we're going to go into our mix two. And for this, we're going to set flap as your master and then set the aileron as your uh, slave channel. Turn it on active and then again you have the positive and the negatives. But I'm going to set mine to zero real quick because yours is going to be at zero and I'll just kind of show you how it's done. So, alright, we're set at zero. My flap channel's down. So, you're just going to look like this. You're going to have one flap up, you're going to have one flap down. So, say I start changing this and I go, I'm going in the positive direction and I look, ah, uh, crap, it's going the wrong way. So, what am I going to do? Go down here and I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So, let's go to the negative side. And basically, I'm just going to keep going up on the negative and you're going to see this flap coming up right here. Or, this spoiler coming up. And basically, you're just going to keep going until you have it the same height as that one right there. When you think it's about the same height, which that looks pretty close, so I'm just going to stop it right there. And then you just get out of it, and you're done with that. So now, on your flap channel, you're going to turn them off. They go down, you turn it on, and they go up, and they're both on the same height. So then when you're in the field, if you hit this and you're going, and it brings your nose up a lot more than you want to, then you just go right back into your controller, and this time you're just going to go to where it says flaps. And then go down and just control this number right here. And then it's going to, as you see, control both of them. So, and that's how you set up your flaps. And that's pretty much it on how I set my uh, controls up on the F-18. That's basically the motor that I use and everything. So, you can do yours however you want. I mean, there's many ways to do it. You can... Look at RC Powers, his, he has his stuff going all crazy like he goes left and everything just moves it seems like. So, but anyways, that's just a simple setup of how I did it. And if you like this video, then subscribe and I'll try to get a video of the Maiden whenever I'm being this plane. Hopefully I will have someone there to video it for me. So, anyways, look forward to more videos being posted.